Hey everybody, so we're gonna talk about how to do the colligative property calculations. We spoke in class about the fact that there's four types of colligative properties, uh, freezing point, depression, boiling point elevation, vapor pressure lowering, and osmotic pressure. Um, we talked a little bit about how, how osmotic pressure works because that one is really, really important. Um, so if you missed class or if you forget about that, make sure you go and watch the recording in Blackboard. So we're gonna pick up with doing the calculations. So we can figure out, for example, if I put five grams of salt into some water, what would the freezing point be? Or what would the boiling point be? Um, you can even calculate vapor pressure. Um, so I'm picking up with the notes from chapter 13. So you wanna get those out and fill things in as we go. And just like, just like before, there will be little um, quizzes embedded in Blackboard for you um, to just check and make sure you're on track. And then we're going to do a project in class when we meet next um, that's going to explore all of chapter 13, including collective properties. Okay. So we spoke about this a little bit, but I want to really make sure that you understand why IMF is the beginning part of this chapter and colligative properties is the end. The reason is because you can't understand why vapor pressure is lower when you put a solute into a solvent without understanding how IMF works. So if we just picture what a solution looks like, you have a solute surrounded by solvent. The interactions between the solute and the solvent are by definition stronger than the interactions that the solute had with itself and than the solvent had with itself. Otherwise, it wouldn't have formed a solution. So that was covered in the section of the textbook about thermodynamics of solutions. Um, so if that's true, we, um, by creating a solution, have increased the strength of IMF, uh, which means that it wants to stay, the solute and the solvent both, want to stay close to each other. They don't want to vaporize or they don't want to boil. They don't want to separate into the gas phase. So just remember, higher IMF, that's an H. So higher IMF equals uh, a more condensed phase. So you're more likely to be a solid than a gas, or you're more likely to be um, a liquid than a gas, right? Because those are more condensed phases. We picture the molecules being closer together. So the reason vapor pressure, which again is sort of the, the number of atmospheres of a gas in a closed container um, over a liquid. The reason vapor pressure goes down is because you're literally pulling those gas molecules harder into the liquid phase using a stronger intermolecular force from the solute. Um, the freezing point goes down, okay, be, whenever you make a solution. Um, that's because you have to remove more heat. I'm gonna write that down. It's a little confusing. So you have to remove more heat, which is Q, in order to like almost push the solute molecules out of the way. So you can form, say, ice. Okay. So it means the temperature is going to be lower. If you have to remove more heat, the temperature will go down farther than it would normally do if it's just the solvent. Boiling point goes the opposite way. So when you boil something, you are literally trying to break up all the intermolecular forces so that they become ideal gases, which means totally separate, no interaction, um, no IMF, essentially. That assumption's actually not true. We learned about that at the end of 141 gas laws, but you know we like to pretend that it is. So at any rate, in order to have a, something boil, you have to break up the IMF so that the gas particles can form. It makes sense then that the, the temperature of the boiling point has to increase because you're gonna have to add more heat in order to separate those stronger IMF. So it's the same reason the freezing point is depressed but they go in opposite directions, okay? But it's always about IMF. In fact, 
95% of the time, if a question asks you why a physical state is the way that it is, a physical property is the way it is, it's going to become, it's going to boil down, <laughs> that's a joke, it's going to boil down to the intermolecular forces that are holding the solution or the solvent or whatever it is together. Um, so the first calculation type that we're going to look at is going to be um, the change in temperature for freezing or boiling. And it's the same formula regardless if you're freezing or boiling. And so I've outlined uh, all the, the sort of variables here for you. And the equation is this one. So the change in temperature, delta means change, is the number of particles. So we talked about that today. Ionic things have more than one particle. Covalent things just have one. Little m is molality. So we learned about that in chapter 13.4 of the Brown and LeMay textbook. And K is a constant that depends on the solvent and also whether you're freezing or boiling. So we have just a short little summary on this one. So water normally freezes at zero Celsius. That's the definition of zero. Uh, and, and if you're doing a freezing point calculation, you would use K sub F. Most people just say Kf. So the Kf here is 1.86 degrees Celsius times kilograms of solvent per mole of solute. So these units are funny because we have to cancel out the molality and um, end up with a temperature. So we have to have kind of inverse mol molality here um, and Celsius on top so that it, you know, it ends up coming out correctly in the end. So this is a constant. Water always has this value. Water also boils at 100 degrees, as long as it's pure. It's normally not pure, um, but you know, these are, these are theoretical. If you're trying to do a boiling point calculation, you're gonna use 0.512, all right? Um, there's some other solvents here that you can, you can use, acetic acid, benzene, and I think camphor was on there somewhere. Can't get this little thing out of my way. Yeah, there we go. So camphor. And so you can see from these, like camphor has a really high freezing point. It's actually solid at room temperature. Um, because room temperature is 20 degrees Celsius and its freezing point is 178. So anything below 178 and it's going to be a solid. So at any rate, um, these are some handy constants you can use in your calculations. Usually, at least in mastering chemistry, it will give you the values you need. Um, and on your final exam, those are also provided. You do need to usually be able to choose which solvent you're going to be using based on the question and which constant, K, F, or K, B. OK, so let's do a calculation. All right, so a good strategy here, again, is to pause it and try it yourself. So I'm going to make it do that by ending this video. All right, I'll see you in a minute. Give it a shot.